Hi, I'm David Kreisman, head writer of the Unexplainable Disappearance of Mars Patel podcast. I co-created this show four years ago with Jenny Turner Hall, Ben Strauss, and Chris Tarry, and this little labor of love became a hit with families around the world. In a few minutes, we're going to be reuniting some familiar voices, but the reason for this special reunion is the exciting news that Mars Patel is about to become a three-book middle grade series from Candlewick Press. And the first book is set to be released this fall, and I'm thrilled to welcome the author of those books, Sheila Chari. Hey, Sheila. Hi, David. Your other two books came from your own imagination, um, and certainly some of this does too, but um, there was this existing universe. How is it different um, writing this than, than, than your other ones? Yeah, um, that's a good question because, you know, when you're the writer, you feel like you're in charge and you can change things as you're writing. But here I had the whole story, um, but it was such a great learning process because you, um, as a team of writers, you plotted out everything for me. So I knew I had a blueprint. I knew where I had to go so I could just really focus on the characters and making the story just, you know, as interesting and urgent as possible. I didn't have to worry about plot because you all took care of that for me. Um, our, our, um, we were very collaborative in the way, in the way we wrote this. There, there were four of us and bouncing ideas back and forth. Writing a novel is a very different process. Um, but you told me you were also, you collaborated on this as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I envy all of you because you get to work together and work out some of the the problems and just like coming up with cool stuff together. Um, but you're right. And I think when when you get published as a writer, you you get another team to work with. You first work with an editor and my editor, Susan at Candlewick, we worked, you know, we went back and forth and we tried to figure out the best way to do scenes. I would write a draft and send it to her and she would mark it up and she would send me back comments. And then, David, there was another way I thought of, you know, how we collaborate as a team. And this really brings in not just the author, me and my editor, but also the art director, the illustrator, and then all of you on the Mars team. And I'll just, I'll just hold up the book, which is, this is the advanced copy and the real version will be out in October, but this looks like the real thing. And this is the, this is the cover, you can take a look. And it's beautiful. Um, I'm so happy with it, but it didn't just come out of nowhere. This was totally a collaboration. Um, we came up with, you know, who, who's going to do it first of all, and um, the art director gave us a few names and then we all looked at their work and everything was really strong. It was hard to choose, but we finally went with Yuda Onoda and he gave us this beautiful cover with the characters. You can see Mars and Toothpick and JP and Caddy on the front. Um, so he, he looked at what I read and he came up with this and we talked about it some more. Um, the original school Pruitt prep looked more like an ordinary school. And so um, we wanted to kind of make it more fun. So I came up with some images of funky architecture and then Yuda used all of that and this is what he came up with. So this is really sort of a visual representation of all the thoughts that went into it and how we work together. Yeah, I love that cover. It's so great. We were all really excited when we saw it too. And getting to actually see Pruitt Prep for the first time is very exciting. Right. Um, what, um, what themes jumped out at you about the podcast that, that may have made it into the book too? Well, uh, first of all, I love the diversity of these characters. It's not something that's explicitly stated in the podcast. It's there, but it's just an important part of these kids. And I picked up on that and I wanted to make that part of my book. Um, Mars, his mother is Indian and I'm Indian American. So I really connected to that. I wanted to bring some of that into the story. Um, the characters are all blended, you know, and they reflect what it means to live in America now. They have different um, cultural backgrounds, different abilities, different ways that they lead. Um, some of them are physically strong, some of them are empathetic. So I brought all of that. So I love the diversity. I love the technology. Um, and this is actually a really uh, future forward positive book. Um, there are scary things that go on, but these kids use technology to solve problems. So that was important and just the way they talk. The way they talk 
really just won me over and I wanted to bring that into the book. So I use texting, um, uh, kids comment on posts, and so you get to hear them um, in the novel the way kids talk today. So those were some of the things that I wanted to bring to the book. And as you continue on, it seems like all these characters are so special. They almost have superpowers. You know, Caddy can tell what people are thinking. Um, and JP is physically strong and Toothpick is just encyclopedic. So they all have these special powers. What does Mars have? Sometimes I think even Mars feels like, what, what do I have that makes me special? But he's just able to bring all these kids together. He's, he's really what a great leader um, should be. He understands um, how to talk to people and how to bring out the best in them. And he makes decisions when sometimes it's hard to make a decision um, and you don't have all the answers. He's able to do that. And so when I'm writing, um, maybe I want to be like Mars. I'm not very decisive myself, but he seems to know what to do. Um, and I find that I've used that in my other stories. Like I've tried to make my characters more um, leader-like, like Mars. Caddy knows what Mars is thinking. That's what we're always told. But if you really think about it, Mars starts to understand what Caddy's thinking too. Like they, they are very connected. And I don't think it's just superpowers. I think they're just very, um, they've had a history together. Uh, they, they just, they really love and respect each other. So I think um, they grow with each other from the beginning to the end. And you see that Caddy also becomes a leader, much more of a leader, and Mars becomes much more empathetic. So they learn from each other. I mean, what's great about the story, both in the book and the podcast, is you really can't remove anybody from the story. They all play a role. Um, some of the characters are missing, so they're not there in book one, but they have to be there. The story cannot go, move forward. And these, these kids cannot make the important decisions they do without each other. And I think that's what makes an ensemble so important. Everybody has a part to play and you can't pull them out and, and have the story work in the same way. So Now, uh, Oliver Pruitt is such a big presence in the podcast. He's <laughs> kind of the host, he does commercials. Um, how are you able to bring that into the book? Wow, you touched upon one of the hardest challenges, which is that in the podcast, Oliver Pruitt's everything. He's the narrator. Um, he's a character. He's he's playing with their minds. He's 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 pulling the strings, and I wasn't sure how I was going to bring him in, and I I didn't want him to just be the traditional narrator because he's not traditional in any way. So. Um, what you'll see is in the story that everybody has a chance to tell the story. We're in different characters' heads. Um, a lot of the time we're with Mars and Oliver Pruitt is in the podcast. The podcast is actually in the book and there are sections where we hear, you know, like a snippet from his podcast, but we also hear his voice. Um, he's so over the top, um, devious and charming at the same time. And in the book, there's, there's another mystery going on. He knows what's going on and he's kind of letting it on a little bit at a time. And um, their children, uh, they're, they're, they're his fans um, who are commenting on his podcast and they're starting to pick up on the fact that Oliver is not who he says he is, that there's something more um, questionable going on. And they start talking to each other and trying to piece together the larger mystery of you know, who is Oliver Pruitt? What does he want? Why is he so um, invested in these, in Mars and his friends? It's funny when the podcast started, you know, people understood that it was, that it was scripted and that the, the story was fiction, but a lot of people believe that Oliver Pruitt was real. <laughs> they would get that question, like, how did you get Oliver Pruitt to be on this show? You know, would he, did he really come up with it? Um, so I think, you know, the, the audience had the same reaction. Um, which yeah. The, that this, this guy might be pulling our strings too as an audience. I think at a lot of different times in the story, you can't decide, is he the villain? Is, are we rooting for him? Um, he kind of always keeps you guessing, which is great. Yeah, and if you continue with the series, because you know there is a book two and a book three, um, you'll discover that Oliver Pruitt, there's more to him. You know, He's not your arch villain. He has his own backstory and he has his own um, emotional connection. And I think that's what makes him even more um, 
poignant, you know, that he's not just a bad guy, he's not just a good guy, and you really have to keep reading to find out who he is. Sheila, do you have a favorite scene from the podcast that also made it into the book? Uh, I have so many favorite scenes, and but I do think that the opening is uh, really strong. I love that, well, you know, if you know the story, Mars is wondering, where did Aurora go? She's been missing for five days, and he's in school with his friends, and his friends aren't too sure if this is an Aurora thing, because she, she does skip school, or if there's something, you know, more more serious going on and then the code red happens there's this um siren and then they have to go hide in the in the in the broom closet in the janitor closet so i think it's such a great opening scene and actually uh i don't know if you how you feel about this but since we're all here i actually think we should just reenact it what do you think like like you and me would it be okay if i'm mars sure you can be mars and Since I wrote I the be, book, I feel sure. like I should be Mars. Okay, and I'll be uh, I'll be Jonas, I guess. Jonas. Okay. okay, and maybe I'll I'll be Caddy too, because I, I I like Caddy. So I'll be two characters. You can be Jonas. How's that? Okay. Okay. That. Works. Okay. All right. Right. You start. Don't you start? You start five five days. You start. You're you're Mars. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Right. I'm I'm Mars. Okay. Five days. Five what? Five, five days since Aurora disappeared. Don't you remember? Oh wait, and I'm Caddy too. Five days is kind of long, even for Aurora. All right. You know what? I we're doing okay here, but I think we could probably do better. Um, so uh, why don't we bring yeah, yeah. in a few ringers to 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 play the scene for real? Okay. Uh, okay. Because I'm cool with know, that. We have we have some friends waiting in there. There, there's Jaya. Jaya Chetram, Mars Patel. Hey guys. Hey Jaya. Natalie Mail, Caddy. Whoa. Hi. <laughs> hey there. And Carter Minor Jonas. Hey Carter. Jonas. All right. How's it what? going, guys? It's going good. All right. So, Jaya, Natalie, Carter, Sheila as the narrator. Are we ready to do this? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Five days. Five what? Five days since Aurora disappeared. Don't you remember? Five days is kind of long, even for Aurora. What does that mean? Dude, Aurora skips all the time. Meanwhile, Caddy was frowning and holding two fingertips to her temple. What's the matter, Caddy? Are, are you okay? Caddy shook her head, wincing. Lately, her headaches had turned into warning signs. Ow, I'm getting one of those headaches. Suddenly, a siren blared through the school. Attention, attention, students and faculty. This is a code red. Please remain calm and proceed with lockdown protocol. We repeat, this is a code red. Please proceed with lockdown protocol. Is this for real? Caddy would know. Right, Caddy? Ow! The siren continued to blare. This is real, guys. This is real. Harvey, you know where. Most of the time, the janitor closet was a storage room for mops and cleaning supplies, but it was also their secret meeting place. When they reached the closet, Caddy closed the door behind them. Ow! Your headache, Caddy? No, Jonas, your elbow! Well, watch where you're sitting, Cads! <sighs> My headache won't stop. What are you seeing in your head, Caddy? Is it about Aurora? There he goes again about his girlfriend, Aurora. She isn't my girlfriend. Right. You just talk about her all the time. Look, Aurora's been missing for five days, and now there's a code right in school. And Oliver Pruitt said- Oh my god! Why is it always about Aurora or Oliver Pruitt? Get a grip. I'm not making this stuff up. Oliver said on his podcast that something big was going to happen. And look, code red. Aurora's gone. Something is happening, Jonas. I'm not sure what it is yet, but I don't think it's all a coincidence. Mars is right. Caddy rubbed her temples. The worst part about her headaches wasn't the pain, but the feelings that came with them. Right now, it felt like a great big blanket of worry was smothering her. I'm scared too, like something bad is going to happen. But I can't see anything in my head, Mars. I feel it in my gut. Jonas suddenly bent over. 
Oh man, speaking of gut, I gotta go. You gotta go where? You know, like, I gotta go. Jonas stood up, almost knocking over a mop. Now? You can't go now, it's a code red. You heard what Caddy said, something is going on. Yeah, but I gotta use the bathroom or it's gonna be a code brown in my pants. I forgot to take my pills this morning. He reached for the doorknob. Jonas, don't. What if someone is out there? I'm a big guy. I can handle it. How did it feel doing that four, at least four years later? Oh my God. That was fun. <laughs> That's crazy. Everyone's so Natalie, old now. Natalie, your voice is almost the same. Carter <laughs> yeah. and Jai, a little, a little <laughs> Not so bad. Because yeah, we, exactly. we have that growth stage. That's why. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's good that you did. <laughs> you guys were you guys were 11 when we first yeah was that I was right? fifth, that right. was fifth grade now oh my, a sophomore. oh my god yeah so um we're gonna get into that in a second but first uh let's bring on another guest so we can join the conversation we're gonna bring on wyatt ralph aka toothpick hi there guys he hey, hey wyatt. wyatt hello what does wh what does mars patel mean to you after all these years Mars is really like a manifestation of like what I can be and what I want to be. Mars is, Mars is that um, encouragement for me. Like I'm going to do exactly what Mars did. I'm going to go out there, get it. I'm going to be the best that I can. I use it to encourage myself when I need to. Natalie, you are in college now. I am. I am actually um, taking online courses. I am a full-time actress. I go into the city, um, obviously not right now, but I um, had two shows lined up this summer. They got postponed. But um, yeah, just going to the city a lot and auditioning, auditioning, auditioning. That's great. Um, and as you were reading the book, do you still feel a real connection to Caddy? Oh my gosh, of course. I, I, really, I, I really enjoyed reading about her, you know, because you know, you create this idea of Caddy in your head when I'm portraying her, but really to read about her and her background and like who she is to other people was really interesting um, to hear how much empathy she has. She really just, it goes beyond her power. She really feels for other people because she has a great heart. And um, it was just really cool to read about it. Sheila, when you were writing Caddy, uh, where's the, you know, we talked a lot about sort of the line between what's supernatural and what is just you know, the kind of empathy that, that people have to certain degrees. Where, where did you kind of walk that line? And which, which side of the line did you come down on, I guess is the question. Well, in the beginning, it seems like, oh, she can read minds. But I think she really becomes a leader, you know, and you see mm -hmm. that um, in, in the next season and on, that Caddy becomes the new face uh, when, when Mars isn't around, when Mars is gone. Yeah. What happens next? You know, they turn to Caddy. I thought that was really moving. Um, and I, try, I tried to bring that out, that Caddy just isn't just empathetic. She's also very brave and, and courageous. And she makes good decisions too, just, just like she does. Mm -hmm. And Wyatt, uh, Toothpick was the brains of the operation. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you, I remember, uh, you know, you would get some of those big speeches with lots of big words. Was that tricky to do when you were, oh, yeah. when you were 11, especially? <laughs> very, very difficult. <laughs> um, do you, uh, have, have you listened to the podcast to hear what your voice was like recently? You know, just, to, is, it, is it strange uh, to go back and listen? To it? <laughs> yeah. And um, my voice has changed a lot since then. So it's, it's weird. It doesn't even sound like me. <laughs> um, and, and what about when you, when you read the book? Did you, were there things you learned about Toothpick that maybe you didn't know even when you were doing the podcast? Well, I think it's really cool because like, as soon as I read the script for Mars Patel, I always knew it was going to be either a TV show or a book. Um, and to see it like on the page is just really cool and surreal. And, uh, and Carter. Hey there. <laughs> so, Jonas, so Jonas is, Jonas is, you know, and basically in one scene until <laughs> a long time. Yeah. Um, is it great to see the book? And I think, you know, Jonas has a, has a little more, we get, to, we get to meet him a little bit more and learn more about him. Was it fun yeah. to see that in the book? Yeah, I, I remember I was reading the book and I was like learning all these new things. I was like, I didn't know that about him and I'm him. So I was like, it was really crazy to me. I was like, I was like, I was like, it really, it gives him like a good background. You give him like this like backstory that I think he deserved, you know, because it's coming from me. But I think that it was just a great insight into who the character was. 
so uh, as everyone probably notices, there's there's one member missing from from the original five, and that is JP. And unfortunately, Kate Wolfson couldn't be with us on this call today. Uh, but we have a special message from her. So let's take a look at that now. Hey guys, it's Kate Wolfson. Uh, I play JP. Um, I'm so sorry I couldn't be there with the cast today, uh, but I hope you guys all have a really good reunion and I'm sorry that I'm not there. But uh, I love the book so much. It's so cool to watch what we created come alive. And it's the book is so accurate and I could totally see like, Caddy and JP and Mars, you know, totally saying the things that weren't necessarily said on the podcast. Um, but I can't wait to see everything that the book has in store and I can't wait to see everything that happens. But good luck to everybody and hope to see you all soon. So uh, I think now while we have Wyatt here, we're going to do a little bit of a scene from the book between Mars and Toothpick. You guys have that. One of my favorite scenes is on Gale Island and they're hoping to find Jonas because, you know, Jonas has stepped out and they don't see him after he leaves the, the janitor closet and they're on Gale Island and for a moment they think Toothpick is missing too and everybody's so worried and then when they find him, he doesn't really get it right away that it's him that they're worried about. So I'm just thinking it would be nice if Toothpick and Mars could just enact part of that scene because it really tells us a lot about Toothpick. The most important thing is a map, so you're worried about having a map. That's why you were worried when you didn't see me. Wait, we, you think we needed you because of your map? Wouldn't that make sense? No, Pick, we were worried about you. Oh, you were worried about me? That's right, Pick, you. Well, that was fun, hearing two uh, almost grown men reading 11-year-old uh, roles. Um, that was great, guys. Uh, so I was wondering, You've all checked out the book. Um, do you, you have questions for Sheila about it? I'll start with you, Jaya. Hey, Sheila. Uh, I got my copy. What was the hardest part about changing the dialogue from the podcast to the book? I had to make the dialogue shorter in the book than in the podcast because some of the stuff had to come around the dialogue, like the thoughts and the feelings. So I had to balance all of that. And some of the things that are so easy for you to do with just a sound, I had to think of how to make that, you know, translate that into text. So those were, those were some of the things I had to think about. But I had great material, so. Hi, here's my copy. I love it. It is so cool. I literally gasped when I saw it. It was, it's just so awesome to actually see it, like right here in my hands. Um, my question is, um, what does your process look like in terms of listening to a podcast and transferring it into a book? Like what kind of, um, what, what's just the process of listening and then writing? How do you go about doing that? I didn't, I certainly didn't want to just um, write everything down word for word, you know, like verbatim. I wanted it to feel different. So mm -hmm. I listened to everything and then I put it away and I used my memory to, to, to write the scene so that it would just feel really fresh and I would kind yeah. of go where it felt natural. And then I would go back and listen to the podcast and see if I got it right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, that's really cool. Yeah, and sometimes I chose something that wasn't in the podcast and I left it. Um, and then sometimes I just couldn't figure out how to get from point A to point B and I would have to just change what was what was in the podcast and put it in and then sort of, you know, blend it together. But I think it was really important to put some space between hearing it and writing it so that I, I wasn't being robotic about it, that I yeah. was paying attention to the story. That's really cool. I have my copy here. I love it. But I just wanted to ask, when's the Jonas spinoff coming? I just, no, I'm sorry. In all actuality, I thought, I thought it was an amazing book. I was just wondering, how did you find, because I was, when I was reading it, I found myself getting surprised and I was like, but I already knew that, but had I not, I wanted to know how do you make it so that it's different, but the same in, in the way of writing the book? Well, um, one thing that I did do was I used my 12 year old as my, my beta reader, if you know what that is. So she kind of made sure that it was interesting enough. So if she thought something, you know, and so I had to go and make the chapter endings more of a cliffhanger. I started doing mm -hmm. things like that. She um, made my text sound like a 12 year old and not like, you know, a mom. <laughs> 
too. <laughs> um, I've been told I sound like sometimes. So I think it helps to have kids in your life that um, make you think about, well, what would make the scene more interesting? What needs to be removed from the scene that makes you want to find out um, what that thing is? So. Yeah, it's an amazing book. So thank you so much. Thank you. No, you you were all so wonderful. I had your voices in my head while I was writing them. I know your voices have changed a little for some of you, but I have to say it's just so great to to meet you because your voices were in my head during all of this process. Well, um, this whole process of uh, changing a podcast to a book, I'd never heard of that before. Did you have any like inspiration um, to try to adapt a podcast? You know, I feel like I'm the first person I know doing this. I, I may not be, but I had nobody to look at there because I think podcasts for children are a really new thing. You really, all of you are really on sort of the cutting edge of storytelling for this age group. So I had nobody to turn to except your voices. Honestly, your voices were what helped me. Um, so, and in fact, even when you were reading the scene now, it was just really great to hear. Some of those were my words. Some of them were the original words and to hear you um, bringing them to life. Um, so I didn't have any any help except what I heard from all of you. Okay, so the publisher Candlewick Press is running a contest where readers can win a, a swag pack if you collect a secret word or phrase from each of these videos. Um, so I'm gonna see if you guys can all help us out on this one. Um, if you know the answer to this trivia question, call it out and then, uh, well, Sheila can, can decide who came in first, but who remembers what was Mars Patel's favorite cereal? Galaxy clusters. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. Yeah, I, I, I don't think yet we need a judge on that one. <laughs> I would not even recall that. That's, that's amazing. I actually, in quarantine, I re-listened to the whole podcast. So it's literally fresh in my brain. That's, that's awesome. good. Well, this was so fun, everyone. You know, Mars Patel has been part of our lives now for, for four years. And with these books, it's going to keep being part of our lives and, and the lives of listeners and now, and now readers. Um, and seeing the whole cast back together. We miss you, Kate, but uh, this, was, this was really fun. I know it was fun for Sheila too. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it was just really a treat to see you um, face to face on Zoom. <laughs> and uh, it, I, I, I'm excited to continue working uh, on the next books and having your voices be there in my head as I, as I continue writing. So as we say goodbye, I think there's just one thing left for everybody to say. So I'll let you guys take it away. To the stars. To the stars. To the stars. To the stars. All right, to the stars. To the stars. <laughs>